Hey friends, <clears throat> it is Saturday, December 10th, 2022. As I was awakening on my bed, even though I didn't want to wake because I'm exhausted, a good friend passed away this week and just gathering for that, the emotions, an incredibly busy work, physical week, and I'm pretty exhausted, but as I was awakening upon my bed, I was just engaging the Lord and he just began to release so much revelation. And so I just want to release something little. I know people don't have a lot, you know, we just, we got a lot going on and, and, and most people want something short and sweet. So I'm going to try and give you something short and sweet today. And, um, it's in regards to the pleasure of the Lord. Isaiah chapter 53 verse 10 says, the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. And the Lord just totally released what that is. And there's different depths to that, but this, it's pretty amazing. So what is Isaiah 53? What is the context of Isaiah 50, chapter 53? It is the cross. Isaiah, the prophet Isaiah, saw the cross. Um, in verse Isaiah 52, 13, kind of really leads into that revelation. Well, even before that, but Isaiah 52, 13 says, Behold, my servant shall deal prudently. He shall be exalted and extolled and be very high. As many as were astonished or astonished at him, his visage, his face was so marred more than any man and his form more than the sons of men. So shall he sprinkle many nations with his blood. And then in verse 10, it says, the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. What is the pleasure of the Lord? that will prosper in his hand. What is the pleasure of the Lord that will prosper in his hand? The pleasure of the Lord that prosper in his hand. What pleases God? Hebrews chapter 11, verse six says, I think it's verse six, without faith, it is impossible to please him. For those that come to him must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. They must believe that he is, that he exists. No, <laughs> that he is love. You must believe that he is love. That's what pleases him. Not that he exists. He's love. Do you think it really pleases him? I know you exist. No, it pleases him that you know his love because that puts you in a posture to be able to receive that love. By faith, we receive that love. And he's love. He just wants to release it to us. But if we go, well, is he really good? Then it hinders us receiving that, right? If somebody's love and, and you question them, you doubt them, you... You can't receive what they want to impart to you. It requires trust. It requires faith. And so in the context of Isaiah 53, we can trust him. He, he, he laid it all down to perform the mercy, to perform the act of first love. He first loved us. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way. And the Lord hath laid on him, Christ, the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as the lamb to the slaughter and as the sheep before her shears is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. And he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who shall declare his generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. 
because he had done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief when he made his soul an offering for sin. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. The pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. What is that knowledge? The knowledge of salvation, which is the knowledge of his love. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. The knowledge of his love, but it's by faith that we receive it. That's the pleasure of the Lord that prospers in his hand. Those that can receive it by faith. The knowledge of salvation is the knowledge of that love. And we are justified by believing in that love. Not anything we do, but just believing, trusting his love. I'm going to take you to Isaiah chapter 16. Not Isaiah. Psalm chapter 16, a psalm of David. David, a man after God's own heart. David, who stepped into the realms of the breadth, the length, the depth, and height to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge. David in Psalm 16 says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. He's talking about trusting his love. Preserve me, O God. This is David. What is David? When, when he says, preserve me, O God, he's talking about mercy and truth. As David says in Psalm uh, 61, verse 7, O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which shall preserve him. What is mercy and truth? It's Jesus' act of first love and the shedding of his blood. It's his words of truth. It's this covenant whereby we are rooted and grounded in love. It's the key of David. Mercy and truth go before his face, it says in Psalm 89, verse 14. He said unto me, seek ye my face. What's in his face? What is in the light of his face? The revelation of his love. Mercy and truth go before his face, his image, that we would come into our ordained image, love. And we are to put our trust in his mercy. We are to put our trust in his words of love, that covenant. Oh, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. Psalm 16, verse 1. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. For you have said unto the Lord, thou my Lord, is what the King James says. But the King James really bungles this verse, as do most of the other translations. It's really simple. What the Lord, what, what, what David is capturing here. David is capturing a conversation between the Son and the Father. And where did David hear that conversation? When he had the vision, the experience of seeing the cross. He heard Jesus say this to the Father. And this, this is what he records in Psalm 16, verse 2. Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. For thou hast said unto Yahweh, is the Hebrew, the Tetragrammaton, you have said unto the Father, thou, my Lord, my Adonai, Jesus, for you have said unto the Father, thou my Lord, my goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is all my delight. My goodness, the goodness of this love, this extravagant love of the Father, the goodness of the Father's house, to know this love. My goodness, this is what he released to us at the cross. This is what he said to Jesus said to the Father at the cross. My goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent 
in whom is all my delight. <laughs> the excellent in whom is all my delight. You know that word delight is the same word in Isaiah 53. It says the pleasure of the Lord. The excellent in whom is all my pleasure. It pleases God that we would trust, that we would believe in this love so that we could receive it. My goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is all my pleasure. Those that can receive it, yes, Lord, you are good. Awaken, awaken to righteousness, to remember he is love. pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. This is our inheritance to know this love. As Psalm 16 says, Preserve me, O God, for in thee do I put my trust. For thou hast said unto Yahweh, thou my Lord, my goodness is to the saints who are in the earth, the excellent in whom is all my delight, all my pleasure. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another. Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take their names into my lips. Jesus, or David speaking of those who go after idols. The Lord is my inheritance and my cup, the cup of salvation. Thou maintainest my lot, my inheritance. The lines are fallen unto me unto, in pleasant places. The inheritance lines, the allotting lines. Listen to what David, this is the context of this inheritance. The lines are fallen unto me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage, inheritance. It's this inheritance of knowing the love. My goodness is to the saints who are in the earth excellent in whom is all my pleasure the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand without faith it is impossible to please him because all he wants to do is release this love into our hearts for those that come to him must believe that he is that he is love and that he is a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Shalom, shalom.